Step 1. Explain the purpose and procedure to the patient. Greet the patient, introduce yourself, and explain what you are about to do. I am going to check your blood pressure. It will involve wrapping a cuff around your arm and inflating it. When you explain the procedure, it reduces anxiety. Patient's cooperation is gained and it prevents unnecessary movement or talking, which can raise blood pressure artificially. Step 2. Position the patient comfortably. Ensure the patient is sitting with back supported, feet flat on the ground, legs uncrossed, and arm resting at heart level. This is because improper positioning such as crossed legs, unsupported back or arm can change the reading by 5 to 10 millimeters of mercury and give you a false value. Step 3. Check the instrument for functionality. Inspect the sphygmo manometer to ensure the needle is at zero. The cuff is intact with no leaks and the stethoscope is working. This is because only a functioning, calibrated instrument can give accurate and reliable readings. A faulty cuff or gauge can cause serious errors. Step 4. Expose the patient's upper arm. Remove or roll up clothing so the cuff is placed directly on the skin. Do not place cuff on an arm with wounds, edema, lymphedema, arteriovenous fistula, or an IV line. This is because clothing morphos corrupt cuff sounds, and applying pressure over compromised arm may worsen the condition or give false readings. Step 5. Palpate the brachial artery. Use your fingertips to feel for the brachial pose just above the elbow crease and a cubital fossa. This is because locating the artery ensures correct placement of the stethoscope. If the pose is absent or very weak, it may indicate an emergency such as arterial obstruction or severe hypotension. Step 6. Apply the cuff wrap, the cuff snugly around the bare arm, about 2 to 3 cm above the elbow crease. Make sure it is not too tight or too loose and leave space to place the stethoscope. This is because correct cuff placement ensures that the bladder of the cuff compresses the brachial artery evenly, allowing accurate transmission of sound. Step 7. Position the stethoscope. Place the diaphragm or bell of the stethoscope over the brachial artery in the antecubital fossa. Ensure good contact with the skin. This is because accurate placement allows clear detection of corrupt cough sounds, which are essential to identify systolic and diastolic pressures. Step 8. Estimate systolic pressure. Palpatory method. Close the valve. Inflate the cuff while palpating the radial pulse. Note the point where the pulse disappears, then inflate about 20 to 30 mm of mercury above that level. This is because the palpatory method helps detect the auscultatory gap, a period of silence that can make you miss the true systolic pressure if not checked. Step 9. Measure blood pressure. Auscultatory method. Place the stethoscope properly, then slowly deflate the cuff at 2 to 3 millimeters of mercury per second while listening. First appearance of clear tapping sound, corot cuff, is the systolic blood pressure. Disappearance of sound, corot cuff, equals diastolic blood pressure. This is because a slow deflation rate ensures you don't miss the exact points. If you deflate too quickly, you may underestimate systolic and overestimate diastolic values. Step 10. Remove the cuff and record the reading immediately. Deflate fully, remove the cuff, 
and note the reading to the nearest 2 mm of mercury. If abnormal, repeat after 1 to 2 minutes and take the average. This is because writing immediately prevents forgetting or mixing up values. Repeating and averaging increases reliability and reduces errors due to white coat effect. Step 11. Reassure the patient and interpret the result. Thank the patient, explain the result in simple language, and give follow-up advice if the BP is abnormal. This is because reassurance reduces patient anxiety, while interpretation and guidance promote adherence to treatment or lifestyle advice. Step 12. Manage according to national guidelines, charter standing orders. This is because evidence-based guidelines provide the safest, most standardized management pathway for hypertension or hypotension.